Welcome to Nanome. We're continuing our GPCR series today, and uh, John and Carla and I are joined by a special guest again today, Asher Brandt, who has recently published a paper in uh, ACS Pharma Pharmacology and Translational Science on serotonin 2A receptor ligands. And this is going to be exciting because these ligands, these phenethylamines, are known to be psychedelics. But there's also a lot of potential for psychedelics as therapies now. And so we're going to uh, turn it over to Asher and hear a little bit about the research that his group has been doing. Great. Thank you, Mike. Um, so what we're going to be looking at today is this is actually a crystal structure from Brian Roth's research group published in about October of last year. And it's um, the serotonin 2A structure crystallized with 25 CN NBOH. And we have the NBOH ligand in this green color. And then we have the surrounding amino acid residues that we're kind of uh, showing inside the binding pocket. And what we overall looked at in this paper is on the phenethylamine group, there's methoxy groups in the two position. And in this one, it's in the five position. So in the paper, we mm. had our organic chemists from Russia make some of these compounds. They switch the position of the methoxy groups instead of two five, they have a two four methoxy compound, 24 HNBOME. They have a two three compound, 23 HNBOME. Um, then they have a um, two three, a three four. And then a 3-5 compound that we'll look at. So basically mm. what we looked at is how does the methoxy substitution affect the potency and the efficacy of these compounds at serotonin 2A receptor? And Asher, and while Ash we're in here, do these two methoxies or this cyano pick up any interactions that you can point out for us? Yeah, I mean, the biggest one the cyano picks up is um, on basically all oh. these residues on Helix 5. A lot of residues on Helix 5 it picks up in this in wow. this area right here and here. Mm. It picks up quite a few. Um, one of the most interesting ones from this crystal structure, I think you guys might uh, enjoy this as much as I did. There is a, uh, there's a serine group right here, right? So this uh -huh. is a serine. And, you know, the crystal structure uh, shows something different from what I think. It, the crystal structure shows the serine hydrogen bonding to here. Sure. But it's I think thermal, that this serine, yeah. I think this serine can form a rotomer. So if we take this and we do a torsion, what I think can happen is the serine can form a rotomer to it hydrogen bonding to not only this atom right here, but also... Mm. It's close enough mm. oh, wow. right here and here. You can also, I think you can form Some a hydrogen boxy, bond yeah. here. Um, I haven't computationally proven that at all. I want somebody in the field wants, sure. wants to call me can out you, on it. Why that can't form a road. Can you <laughs> measure it? Sure. If you, if yeah, you yeah, can, can measure, measure it, maybe, quick yeah. Quick measurement. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, four or five that's microns. definitely in there. I mean, especially as thinking about the hydrogen coming off of it, that's going to be even closer. Exactly. Well, look, that over, was... look over uh, at the serine near Carla. Maybe that could then form interaction with the phenola here instead. Um, it, prob I, it probably could. Yeah, we can, do you want to measure it quick? Yeah. I've got yeah, my measure tool. I mean, you, we can, can uh, just... you can use the torsion to get a slightly better angle on it as well. 4.01, uh, a little further. Uh, not, that's, maybe, that's not close, for... maybe not close no. enough. Right. Well, for now, I want to delete those and just kind of... Yeah. But so I think that's one interesting thing about this structure that uh that kind of when I was doing the docking I kind of realized. But anyways, so if you look at the structures, I'm gonna shrink this a little bit. Let's go to the mm. PDF. Um I don't know if we want to use the the PDF that I had generated or the does it work the end bomb paper PDF? Or is it? Uh, it's I open see right it. now. It's right behind you. Oh yeah. oh there it is. Oh okay. Okay, so <laughs> if we look at the paper um, I was talking about those structures, and here we here's a really nice, pretty picture of all the structures. So in the top, we've got our normal, you know, two five. Mm. We've got our normal two five substituted end bomb compound, the two five methoxies, right um, mm -hmm. here and here, and then we just rotated the ring around. So we've got two three, 
two, three, two, four. Mm. And then we've got two, six, three, four, and then three, five. So we're just trying to figure out mm. how these N bomb compounds affect the potency and efficacy. And here's what we realized mm -hmm. that I think is kind of cool. Um, let's go to the next page. Let's just look at the graphs. So if we'll notice, uh, let's look at the beta arrestin. So this is the beta arrestin recruitment and the mini GAQs, the G protein, but let's focus on beta arrestin. Um, mm -hmm. If you look at the beta arrestin, the, the, strong, the, the ones with the highest efficacy of the N-bomb compounds and potency are so 25 and 25 in red. Okay, and then we've got two, mm -hmm. four in orange, and then two, six. And then basically it leads you to realize that anything with a two position produces higher efficacy and potency. There's one mm. more catch to this, which is really cool. If you'll notice, it, so 23 is when you have the positions, so the methoxies are next to each other in two, three. If you've got two, three in green, it drops quite a bit, right? The potency. Mm. And also, if you'll notice, three, um, three, four, that's where they're also next to each other. I think there's something to be said about if you put those two methoxy groups next to each other, the potency does mm -hmm. drop too. There's something to be said about that. Beta rest in recruitment. And you also looked at a, a mini GQ uh, yeah. um, situation. And it looks like the rank order is similar. Is that, it is. Is that correct? That is correct. So notice, so you're exactly hit the nail on the head, Mike. So 35 and 34, they're both in those blue colors. They produce, they don't recruit, they don't produce uh, G protein binding um, as strong as some of the two positions. Although I think the only one that does two, three is kind of weak, which is interesting. And that's when they're next to each other, right? The methoxies are next mm -hmm. to each other. I think there's something interesting there to be said about sterics, right? When you put two groups next to each mm -hmm. other, they have to point away from each other because there might be some steric clashing. I also thought it was interesting when you compare it to serotonin with beta arrestin, these recruit a little bit better than serotonin, but certainly you can, you can get better GQ binding with serotonin at high concentration. Uh, so I think that's an mm. interesting differentiation. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, serotonin is the normal endogenous ligand that binds to this receptor, right? Um, and it kind of makes sense that serotonin uh, recruits G protein much better because there's a general thing in pharmacology that beta arrestin, strong beta arrestin recruiters tend to be intoxicating. Whereas um, mm. G protein, strong G protein binders don't. Okay. So then in all the molecular stuff that I looked at is I looked at how these things dock to, dock to our structure behind me, um, serotonin 2A. And I think interestingly enough, you can look at the um, interaction energy between some residues. Here, I'll pull this a little closer to me. Um, between some residues on the receptor and um, parts of the ligands that bind to it. So, for example, um, serine one fifty nine is really is uh, is really important in a lot of these structures. And what we'll notice is that LSD is really it's kind of a lot weaker. And it's because uh, mm. well, I kind of deleted that. Let me erase that. Where's my uh, eraser? So LSD is quite um, weak with this interaction because it doesn't form a hydrogen bond. All these other ones that are like mm. negative nine K cows from all, all form a hydrogen bond with serine 159, but LSD doesn't, mm. so it's much weaker. Whereas aspartic acid 155, it's the strongest interaction because they form a salt bridge mm. here. This is like one of the anchors yeah, the of- the amine? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Do you form a so salt bridge interaction? Was serine 159 the serine you showed us that might have an interaction with the methoxy earlier? You you nailed it on the head. That's the one that I rotated. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! But you would, but you know, I I don't have the I don't have the capability of doing MD unfortunately. You'd have to do MD to see if it twists or not, right? You'd have to kind of do M a molecular sure. dynamic simulation. Um, just want to put mm. my hand back. Um, then other important. I'm trying to think of any other important interactions. I mean, all these are important. Uh, one of the ones that's fun to look at, I think, <laughs> is leucine-229. 
So this is the one mm. that uh, traps LSD inside the receptor. And what's interesting is that LSD has really strong interaction with it, but all the other N-bomb compounds don't. Oh, can you show us the, uh, where that is in the structure? Yeah, yeah. totally. Where is it? So if we spin back, I'm going to highlight it with my, um, with my selector tool. Whoops. My selector tool. And it's leucine 229. It's right here, actually. Oh, wow. And then what I can do huh. is uh, I, can put a, I can put a label on it if we want. Let me just see if we can... Uh, I can put a modify tools. Oh, display is where it's we under put display. Labels, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Wow. So, yeah, interestingly enough, LSD interacts much stronger with that residue than even N-bomb compounds, uh, which are so which are the, quite potent. So, does the LSD not go nearly as deep down here into the complex in favor up into here? Yeah, what happens with LSD is, um, so this is right over here. This is serine mm. 242. That's where the hyd that's where the indole forms a hydrogen bond. Uh -huh. So LSD kind of occupies, let me just grab my hand back, kind of occupies like this space right here. And then the leucine 229 is kind of in this region up here. Mm. So and this is the over. glutamic acid. That uh, that's the, the salt bridge with the aspartic amine. acid. Yeah, it's an aspartic, aspartic acid. acid. Yeah, we only got the one methylene there. Yeah, we can. I should have labeled that, but yeah, this is the aspartic acid right here that forms that salt mm. bridge. It's, it's really common amongst all psychedelics. All psychedelics have to form this salt mm. bridge, or else they their activity just crashes, mm. just gets destroyed. Huh. Doesn't really work. So it's. So is this uh, helix here important for uh, the beta restin interaction or the efficacy that's, through beta restin? That's what people seem to think. Yeah, that's what people seem okay. to think in the field. Yep. Hey, Asher, could you um, rotate it a little so we could see um, where the three oh. position substituents might be and if they're, we can visualize oh, sure, any clashes? Yeah. Let's, let's that, blow it up that, a little bit. It's not the greatest. Should I, should I toggle off the other one? Could you change the color? Um, yeah, I can change the color if you want. This is the thirty-five yeah. color. Oh yeah, make it a yeah yeah anything but green. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so wow. what the? That's a much bigger shift than I thought. I mean, this is with Samina docking. This is not what honestly. This is not the dock that I got oh, when I did it. In, oh. This is not the one that I got I when this. This is not the dock that I pulled in from my Astro. This is when I used Samina. Okay. But I mean, you know, if we're just thinking okay. about, you know, the difference between a three position, a three position's right over here, right? So instead of having the methoxy come off in the in the two position, mm. it's coming off of the three position. Yeah. And that well, leads to a, some unfavorable. How about how about we how we get rid of the magenta one and use uh, advanced frames where you can just switch out um you can move around where the methoxy is on this structure if you duplicate it and then we can take a look at it sort of completely overlaying the original structure. I know it probably will fit in slightly differently but yeah, so you'll select the increment frame. Can you just go back and forth using these? And oh, that's um, so yeah. cool! Oh, I love that. Yeah, this, this is amazing. So yeah, um, it looks like in the in, when it's in the two position. So you have this, you have this possible. You know, we have this rotomer change where you have a possible Searing, hydrogen yeah. bond here, keeping it locked into place. But if we go to the next frame when the methoxy is in the three position, it's way too far away to interact. There's no way you're going to oh, form a hydrogen wow. bond there. But I think there's definitely something to be said about if you could run an MD simulation and see if this uh, this serine forms those two rotomers where it yeah. kind of hydrogen bonds Absolutely. to both in sort of a quasi state, right? In sort of a state where it's <laughs> rotating back yeah. and forth. But that's that's really what we found is that when you change to mm. from a two position to a three position, the potency efficacy decreases. And then when you put the mm. methoxies next to each other, you also see a reduction in potency and efficacy. Likely because mm. if you have a if you have a you know let's say we have a two three, these have to rotate mm -hmm. like this direction and this direction away from each other in order to not sterically oh. clash. So it pushes it like this and then like this. Mm. Maybe we should make the maybe we should make the two three one. That would actually be cool to see. <laughs> <laughs> Move the whole thing. 
so it looked something like I remember it was something like this. Let me just think about this. Okay. Something like this, and then it was, oh, and it was something like this. I remember. Okay, it was something it looks like of the this lone nature. Pair of the... Yeah. But for some reason, whatever it is, when you when you force these methoxy groups to uh, go away from each other by about, I mean, it'd be more like a, I think in the actual I measured it was like maybe 180 degrees. Um, you reduce potency. You you reduce potency by quite a bit. Wow. <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah. Interestingly enough, this yep. is a great project. Really, really well thought out and. Honestly, the structural features in here are just really cool to see how you're able to highlight these residues and these modifications you made. Yeah, thank you. And um, thanks for sharing with us. Of course, thanks, guys.